Hello, my fellow comic book collectors. Uh, I watched The Eternals yesterday, and I just wanted to give you my uh, feedback of the movie and whether or not you should watch it or whatever. <laughs> if you haven't seen it or have seen it, um, this video will contain spoilers, probably, because I'll mention some of the characters and some of the things related to The Eternals. So if you're not interested in spoilers, probably leave now would probably be a good idea. Um, I'm also going to mention some of the key books that you might want to pick up if you like the movie and if you like the characters in the movie, so stay tuned for that. Um, but first, I will give you my review of the movie. I went to see it with my kids yesterday. It was kind of cool. <laughs> um, so it was just me and my kids. No wife. My wife hates comic movies, so <laughs> it's always bad bringing her to the movies. So, um, But my kids, they really love uh, comic movies, so it was good. You know, it was good energy, good, you know, good vibe going into it. So, uh, what was my overall opinion? I'd give the movie a six to seven. I'm sort of in that range. And my kids kind of graded it the same way. Um, and I'll explain why. So, I actually like the Eternals. I, I, I think that the critics kind of were a bit too harsh on it. There were a few things that I found a little bit cringy. <laughs> a little bit cringy. And it bothered me, but most of it uh, I actually kind of liked. I actually really uh, thought it was cool. And I didn't know much about the characters, even though I have the comics, I haven't read them yet. I haven't read the Eternals yet. In a way, I didn't want to read them because I didn't want to spoil the movie. So I, I kind of kept them and, I was, and now I'm going to read them and sort of see how it compares to the comic. Um, but going in, I, I didn't really know anything about the Eternals. And the basic synopsis of the story is uh, there's these Eternals that live forever, basically. They're just like these created beings, and they're designed to go to planets to ensure that the intelligent life on those planets is maintained and encouraged to grow. And the more intelligent life that grows on those planets, uh, then what happens is a celestial uses that brain energy to basically uh, form. And so this master uh, um, uh, celestial, uh, and his name is Arsham, uh, basically he seeds all these planets with baby, <laughs> I guess, baby celestials. And uh, once they, those baby celestials get enough brain energy, they hatch. And when they hatch, they blow up the planet. So that's not, not really great for the planets, <laughs> but, um, and that's what's going to happen. And these Eternals, basically their job is to make sure that the brain energy is well nourished and survives. Now there's a, another group uh, called the Deviants, and their function was originally to do the same as the, uh, the Celestials, uh, the Eternals, I should say. And their function was to go out and protect these sentient beings with on, with on the planets. However, the deviants kind of went wrong. They they sort of started killing everything. <laughs> they became like an apex predator, and basically would wipe out the planets. So um, the celestials said, "Hey, we got to get these Eternals to basically fight against the deviants and protect human life." Okay, so that was that's the synopsis uh, behind it all. So. Really, if you think about it, the Eternals have don't really have invested interest in humanity. Like, we're just another thing to feed this baby celestial. So um, that, that was kind of interesting. So in a way, they're not necessarily good guys in, in, in terms of our perspective, because <laughs> our planet will blow up once this baby celestial hatches. But uh, what happens is these celestials or Eternals, I should say, these Eternals, basically, um, they become attached to humanity. They, we kind of grow on them. I guess we're like a fungus. We grow on them. <laughs> so we, you know, they, they, they start embracing humanity and they, you know, start to love us and they want to take care of us. And so they go against their prime directive, which is to destroy uh, the planet and through the birth of a celestial so that's really the whole synopsis of the story and what happens is and a lot of people might not like this might not appreciate this the the eternals in a lot of ways because 
unlike uh, other teams of uh, superheroes, um, they're very detached. Like, if you think about the Avengers and all these other characters, they're very attached to humanity because they're humans. And they, they have an invested interest in seeing humanity win. And, you know, because it's their own people. Celestials are very detached. And they, they almost, like, sort of contemplate a lot. They, they're sort of always uh, detached from humanity. Um, and that's kind of interesting. You know, they show that they have, like, this love with humanity, but at the same time, they're very detached. They don't, like, so when this whole cosmic event happens, like, that the planet's going to blow up, um, they don't go to humanity. They don't even consider it. They don't even think about that. They're, they're detached. And the way that they think is that they, um, it's something that they have to solve within themselves, that they have to figure out what way should they go. Should they let the planet get blown up or should they, <laughs> which is really what they're supposed to do, um, or should they, you know, protect the, the lives that they've become attached to. And a lot of people might not like that part. And I actually really appreciate that part because it gives you a different perspective. You know, these are beings that are well beyond us <laughs> and they, you know, it gives you that God, a little bit of in, insight into what godlike characters would be like. And I thought that was interesting. Um, and I thought that was actually well done in the movie. Um, might, maybe pe many people wouldn't really appreciate that, but I actually did appreciate that. I, I like story more than some of the other things. So, so on the story front, I kind of liked all those elements. Um, but the weakness was some of the acting was a little bit weak. You know, I thought, you know, it wasn't bad, but I just, you know, um, the main, uh, eternal is, uh, Cersei and Cersei, I thought was kind of very, she was emotional, but at the same time, very kind of boring. <laughs> I just thought she just didn't really have much range. I, I found uh, a little bit of weak actress, I thought. But I thought she was pretty and stuff, but just not a great actress. But I thought she was good, okay? So good, but not great, okay? Um, uh, characters that I did like were Gilgamesh. Uh, Gilgamesh is just the strong man, if, you know, if you're going to say what the characters are. Uh, Cersei is kind of like the, the leader default. <laughs> she becomes the leader. Uh, Ajax is uh, played by Salma Hayek. Uh, used to be really beautiful. She's getting a little bit old, <laughs> but um, and Sana uh, Ajax, a character, um, she's interesting because uh, she's like the healer of the group. You know, I always think of Dungeons and Dragons. There's always the healer, <laughs> and she's the healer, um, and she's kind of interesting. So um, she's the usual. She was the leader of the group, but she gets killed. Okay. And uh, she basically passes the torch on to um, Cersei. And Cersei becomes the leader, but really doesn't know how to be a leader. And that kind of plays out throughout the thing. She, I, I never really feel like she does take that leadership role, which is kind of interesting. Um, the other major character is Icarus. And Icarus is kind of interesting. Um, I actually thought his acting was reasonable. Um, Again, not amazing, but reasonable. <laughs> and, um, you know, I thought he was a good character uh, in terms of his motivations. His motivations were do the job, do what they were requested to do. The, these Eternals, just to give you a perspective, uh, have been around for millions of years. And they, what happens is every time that they destroy a planet, they get their memories wiped and then they go to the next planet and repeat the process. So he was kind of in that perspective that, you know, we need to repeat this process. Um, so his motivations were a little bit different. And he becomes the major antagonist in the movie. So Icarus is kind of like the bad guy. <laughs> um, and then there's Sprite, which is this character who is uh, eternally young. And in a way, that they played that very well uh, because she doesn't get as attached to people as other Eternals do because she's never allowed to sort of go through the life's motions. 
she 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 wants to be an adult she wants to be treated as an adult but everyone sees her as a kid and it it makes it really hard for her she has the power to manipulate uh reality in terms of visual it's like an illusionary skill um so she's kind of like you know in this situation where she doesn't feel like uh she can be part of the human process because of the fact that she doesn't you know she can't have a a husband or children or anything like that because she's eternally a kid. Uh, the other character is uh, Kingo. <laughs> and Kingo is uh, Indian in the movie. Um, and he's basically a Bollywood actor. And he's sort of the co comedic uh, character in the, uh, in the movie. Actually, he's not really as comedic as his partner. His, uh, you know, his valet, <laughs> like his Indian valet. I, I thought he was very funny. I thought he... Very well played by that character I, actor. I really liked that uh, performance. Was this <laughs> this valet that was just a human, regular guy, and he was going around videotaping all this craziness that's going on around him, <laughs> with without concern that he might get killed in the process. So I thought he was quite humor humorous. Another character, uh, oh, and Kingo's powers, he can create these kind of energy bolts that kind of blast things. Um, then. And Icarus's power, I should mention Icarus I, before I forget. Icarus's power is he has laser beam eyes and he can fly. He, and he's super strong, super powerful. He's considered the most powerful of the Eternals. And then we have a Drig. Drig? <laughs> uh, Drig is the one that can basically control minds. He's kind of super powerful. And he actually, of all the characters, is the one that most wants humanity to succeed. And he, he feels like, why do we let these wars go on? Why do we let them kill each other and stuff? We could stop it. And Druk actually says that he could basically control everybody's mind on the planet <laughs> and just make them all peaceful. But uh, they're not allowed to do that. So he, he's in conflict with that because he really doesn't like the idea of seeing all these wars, senseless wars and stuff. Um, the next character is uh, Fastos. Fastos uh, was a character that I like, but didn't like. And the reason I didn't like him is not because I didn't think the actor was good or anything like that. Uh, I felt like it was too much pandering with his character, that they they, they created this gay couple, and uh, it was just... And the not only was it a gay couple, but the husband was, uh, was uh, Muslim. <laughs> so, which is kind of weird. Actually, the real actor that plays that character... He is, uh, he was raised as a Muslim and came out gay and then he had to obviously leave the religion. Uh, I thought that was kind of something too much for the movie in a way. I just didn't, I, I really don't think um, these kind of movies, these Eternals or any of the Marvel movies should really get into those political agendas and, you know, all this kind of stuff. I really just don't like that as, uh, like as a part of it because it just it seems like forced and cringy and it just bothered me so other than that <laughs> I, I liked uh that character so um you know he's festos's powers i guess are um he can basically he has a sense of technology and he can make machines and he can he can do a lot of powerful things he's actually a very powerful character and he's the one that kind of uh influences mankind to have technology and he kind of helps man evolve in terms of their technical element. So they each have like their own proficiencies that kind of help mankind. Um, but they never really get super involved where they stop major wars or things like that. They just are sort of, as I said, always uh, distant. Uh, let me think if there was uh, another major character is Athena, not Athena, but Athena. And um, her role is um she's like an eternal that has like the weary uh, the weary uh, i think i might be mispronouncing that but basically it's this disease that the eternals sometimes get where they just can't handle all the memories that they have and it's really what's happening is they they think like the way it plays out at the beginning is that they think oh you can't handle five thousand years of memory where it really is not just 5,000 years of memory, it's a million years of memory. So she's basically remembering everything and it's kind of messing her up. She doesn't really, 
uh, know how to be normal. And a lot of the time she ends up attacking the other Eternals because she has this kind of conflict. And she, I thought she was played very well. Um, she was by Angelina Jolie. And I thought, actually, I kind of liked her character and I liked her abilities. Her abilities was she can use the celestial force to basically create weaponry and armor and stuff like that. And she was, she was like the kind of badass fighter. And she's like, um, because a lot of these characters, they get kind of in, you know, put into our mythology. Uh, she was also known as Athena uh, when they lived in Greece. So I thought that was kind of interesting that they, they showed how the Eternals kind of became gods to us simple humans um so i thought that was interesting uh who else was there um there was uh macri uh macri was a deaf character again they they have to put in these kind of things um uh you know i, I and she could run super fast she didn't really have much of a role in the movie and like I felt like she was just kind of there. I don't, she didn't really, you didn't really get a sense of her personality. Um, and I thought she was kind of a weak overall character. Um, let me think. And who else was there? I think that's all the major characters. So, you know, it was interesting to see all these characters and the way it's always a challenge to introduce so many characters. And I actually thought that they had done a pretty good job of doing that. Some of the weaknesses of the movie would be uh, sometimes it was kind of slow and I, I thought they could have picked up the piece. I think it could have been trimmed down a bit, like maybe about 20 minutes. They could have trimmed the movie down, made it a much tighter film. Um, my other issue with the Eternals was um, uh, I really didn't get a sense of how powerful the Deviants were. Like the Deviants to me just seemed like beasts, but not really like like powerful on their own they just seem tough and big uh but you didn't really get a sense of how powerful they are um that was kind of one of the weaknesses like you know you would think wow the avengers fought more powerful creatures than these you know but and we're supposed to interpret that these deviants are super powerful so i didn't really get that sense um and maybe i'd love to hear what your feedback on that part is but uh, i really didn't get the sense of how powerful the deviants were now, the other thing that was interesting about the Deviants uh, was that they were evolving. So uh, they could become more powerful. And one of the Deviants actually did fully evolve into becoming almost sentient. Well, it, becoming sentient and actually uh, having the knowledge of the Eternals that it absorbed, which is kind of cool. Um, what else was there? Other weaknesses about the movie, other than the pandering a bit, uh, I'm just trying to think. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, um, those are the big ones. I, 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 like, just pacing was a little bit slow, and I, I think they could have made the flow of the movie a bit better. Those would be my big issues. Um, it looked a little bit CGI, <laughs> you know, typical Marvel situation where, you know, it's, oh, you're fighting CGI. <laughs> it's like, but that, a little bit of that. Um, the other, uh, thing that I had to mention is one more character and that is Dane Whitman. Now, Dane Whitman, I thought was actually good. I like Dane Whitman and I like the fact that, um, they didn't really kind of, they kind of hinted at him in terms of what he's going to become, but they didn't really, he didn't go full Black Knight or anything like that. So they kind of hinted at that. They were playing with Excalibur as like some toy. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Uh, and you know. It was it was interesting. Uh, so I I think that they're, they're really setting up him as a character to go on into future movies. So I thought that was good. Um, the other big thing in the movie is the end credit scene, and that was with uh, Star Fox and uh, Pip the Troll. So I I I I thought they were really cool. I thought they came in very interesting. Actually, I really liked that end scene. Uh, totally. Uh, you know, sets up a lot of things. You can really see that this this whole movie is a setup for other things that they're planning on doing with the Marvel, uh, you know, next phase. Um, you can see that um, <clears throat> the Eternals, they don't need to make an, an Eternals 2 with this. This really just lays the found, uh, foundation for future things. So it just sort of sets up this whole idea that there's these 
the celestials out there, that there's these eternals, that there's these cosmic level events going on. And I think that was really good. Um, so yeah, that was my <laughs> overall impression and a little bit of the story. Now let's get into some of the comics related to all those characters. Now I didn't bring, I actually might have it behind me. No, I don't think I do. Um, <laughs> I actually have the Fantastic Four issues somewhere. I might just look back one sec here. No, I don't have them handy. So I was going to say, <laughs> I have the Dane Whitman issues. There's a couple uh, for Fantastic Four that uh, are kind of key. There's like two issues that you should pick up from Fantastic Four. Uh, and I'm blanking on which numbers they are. I think they're in the, they're in the forties or sixties, somewhere in there. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, those ones definitely pick up. Um, but I'm going to focus on the Eternals themselves. So, um, the obvious book that if you want to collect the Eternals is Eternals number one. And this is the first appearance of Icarus. He's the guy with the laser beam eyes. And it's also kind of the introduction to the whole concept of the Eternals. So it's the first kind of cameo of many of the characters' t team appearance. And it's also the first mention of the Deviants. So this is kind of the, the first major book. Obviously, Eternals number one. And that's that one. And then we got uh, Eternals number two. And Eternals number two is, I think they, this is where you get Ajak and Ersham. Ersham is the, the big, B, uh, the controlling celestial. He's the guy that kind of introduces everything. So this is where the celestials really get mentioned and that you get that sense of how important the celestials are in terms of the history. So, um, so the, the, this is the first appearance of the celestials and Ersham, which is, he's kind of the big guy. And the way that the Eternals kind of treat Ersham is he's almost like their god or their leader. Not leader, but more like their god, actually. They treat him kind of like <laughs> that, that next level. Um, so, uh, very important book, number two. So, Ajak and the Celestials being mentioned. The next big book is actually kind of interesting. So, uh, I would say it's number three. Okay, so Eternals number three. Mine's in a bag, but um, this is from 1976. And this is the first appearance of Circe. Now, Circe in this uh, is the one that's in the movie, but uh, this is not truly her first appearance. So this is her first appearance where it's spelled uh, S-E-R-S-I. But she's actually referred to as Circe in an earlier book, much earlier book. Um, I'll show you that book. This one, uh, Strange Tales 109, where it's spelled, I'm going to spell it correctly, C-I-R-C-E. -E. So um, this is the first appearance of Circe. <laughs> Circe. Uh, and this is um, like 10 years earlier, like 13 years earlier. So... This is really her first appearance. In a weird way, she's maybe, this is the, maybe the first Eternals book too, in that respect. So, um, not really, but kind of. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah. So this is another key book that you might want to pick up. Um, and then we got some more characters. My copy of number five is terrible. You can see it's like totally <laughs> mangled. Oh, well, it's like, I got it cheaply. I paid like, you know, five bucks or something like that so you get what you pay for sometimes it's totally mangled like it's got like big scratch out of it but number five is kind of a key issue because it is the first appearance of Fina which is the Angelina Jolie's character and then we got uh Dalmo uh and Makara and uh Zuras okay so so uh bunch of major characters all in this one book so the eternal you know the eternals have so many characters that you know there's this one is kind of a key book i wish i had it in a better grade um the next book is number nine i have actually the whole set but i just these are the key ones uh number nine is the first appearance of sprite and that's the girl that uh, is always young looking 
Okay, so Sprite. And then number 11 is the first appearance of uh, Drig and uh, Kino. Kingo. Kingo. Uh, they, you know, so that's the, you know, the guy that can control mines and the guy that's got the firepower. So kind of cool. Number 11. Now, the Eternals, they use what's called the Uni Mind, and that's where they kind of all collectively kind of put their energy together, and they have this superpower Uni Mind, okay? Well, this is the first appearance of that Uni Mind, is number 12. So if you want the Uni Mind, <laughs> and it was in the movie, so um, that's the first appearance of the Uni Mind. Number 13 is uh, the appearance of Gilgamesh, first appearance of Gilgamesh. So he's the strong guy in the Eternals. And yeah, okay. Okay, and then there are uh, two other books that you might want to consider getting if you like Fastos. Fastos is the gay character in the movie. <laughs> uh, he made his first appearance in the miniseries. So there was a Eternals miniseries and he made his first cameo in the first of those of the miniseries and then he made his first full appearance in um number three so those two of the miniseries and that's it those are all the books that you need to collect uh if you're trying to get all the eternals and then as i said you might want to check out those uh dane whitman books from fantastic four so um those are the other ones to get uh, i have them they're in a box i'd have to get them out but I do, I do have them. They're, they're really cool. I, I actually really like the Black Knight. It's a book that personally I want to get. Like, uh, I don't have the original Black Knight. That's from the 1950s. Um, and it's really pricey every time. <laughs> every time I just, uh, my bid just gets blown out of the way. So um, I think I just saw a 2.0 sell for 3000 So <laughs> just to give you a sense of how expensive that book is. Um, but Black Knight number one is his first appearance as a character, the Black Knight. He he wasn't Dane Whitman at that time. He he was a different, I forgot the name of the character, but uh, he was the Black Knight. And that was the first original Black Knight. And it wasn't until Fantastic Four in the 60s that he reprised, they changed the name of the character and made a new version of him. And, you know, it's the Black Knight. So um, there's so much hinting about him as a character kind of, in a whole bunch of things. Like Dane Whitman has, I think, a major role coming forward. Uh, he was mentioned in Spider-Man. There was like a bunch of little Easter eggs for him. And he was, in the, uh, when I'm saying Spider-Man, I mean Spider-Man, the second second one, um, Homecoming or like uh, Far From Home, I believe, Far From Home. And, um, you know, and he's also, as I said, in the Eternals movie and being set up. <laughs> so um, I have a feeling he'll be a pretty major character. So with all that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. What did you think of the Eternals? And please leave that in the comments below. And thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. Thanks.